Hi, my name is John Tomitz from Milwaukee, USA, and I'm here to talk about early onset scoliosis. In most cases, no restriction is necessary. This is a model of a child's spine. In children with uh, infantile scoliosis, the spine starts out uh, straight and the bones themselves and discs are normal and the ligaments are normal. And in these cases, the spine may develop a curve, but the spine is just as strong as uh, any other child's. However, there's some cases where there can be congenital abnormalities of the spine and the different bones can be wedged or they can be stuck together. Uh, this can cause an acute uh, bend in the spine and potentially cause some risk for neurologic injury. So your physician will be the ultimate one to decide about your child's uh, activity restrictions. But in most cases, uh, uh, very minimal activity restrictions are required. Well, the most serious complication with early onset scoliosis relates to the development of uh, the effects of the curves on the lung. And this is the spine and this is the rib cage. So the uh, child has assessment from both the development of the spine and the rib cage. Uh, some children can have abnormalities of the rib. This is an example of a situation where the ribs are actually fused together. This will affect the motion of the ribs. It may affect rib growth and development, the, the effect of the lung on that side. Uh, another abnormality <clears throat> that's very common that develops is the spine develops an increase in curvature. The spine itself can develop, actually go into the rib cavity here. This restricts the space available for the lungs and ultimately as the curve gets larger it has more of a negative effect on the space available for the lungs and this can have a very uh, negative effect on the lung function. It makes the heart uh, pump harder to get the blood through the lungs and it can affect the space available for the lung to grow. The most common test is a plain x-ray. Most children need a front view and a side view. This is looking at the child from a, a front view. Well, one of the more common measurements that we look at to assess the child's deformity is what's called the Cobb angle. And if this is the child's curvature here, we pick the bone that's most tilted at one end of this curve and the bone that's most tilted at the other end of the curve and draw a line parallel to that. And then the line intersecting these two lines, this is called the Cobb angle, and this Cobb angle gives us an idea of how, actually how bad the curvature is. And this way we can assess the child's curve from visit to visit to make sure that it's uh, stable or make sure that it's not changing. Uh, other things that we look at on the film are the alignment between the ribs and the vertebral body. The angle between the ribs and the vertebral bodies is something that can also help us predict whether it's a type of scoliosis that will uh, progress or not. We look at the individual vertebral bodies to make sure that there's no evidence of any congenital deformities, that the bones aren't wedged or fused together, and also to make sure that there's no uh, evidence of any rib abnormalities too. It's also important to get a side view of the child as there can be significant abnormalities here also. Some children can have what's called increased kyphosis or an increased round back. Other children, the spine is actually sunken in. Uh, this is called uh, lordosis. Uh, these abnormalities can also have a significant effect on the lung function and also we make sure there's no congenital abnormalities on the side view too. Now, another common test that's necessary in children with uh, early onset scoliosis is an MRI. The brain to, uh, up here and this is the spinal cord, the gray area through here. These are the bones of the spine. These are called the vertebral bodies. So this is actually what it looks like in a, a normal MRI in the child. In some cases there can be some significant abnormalities and occasionally these abnormalities may require treatment. Uh, this is a child where you can see here is again is the uh, brain tissue and this uh, part of the brain tissue here called the cerebellum is going through a hole at the base of the skull and pressing on the spinal cord and this is causing some fluid to develop within the spinal cord. So again the gray area is the spinal cord, the black is the fluid within the spinal cord and you can see there's quite a bit of fluid within the spinal cord. <clears throat> Another uh, study which may be necessary and this is particularly in children that have uh, congenital scoliosis that, be, uh, that may help the surgeon decide whether there's some sort of underlying abnormality which is causing the curve to progress and this is uh, the results of what's called a CAT scan. And the CAT scan is different than the MRI in that it gives us better 3D anatomy of the individual bones and can tell us in these complex curves uh, what the deformities are and how likely the curve is to progress. Uh, and the CT scan gives us better information as far as fine bony detail of both the uh, spine and the ribs. So here's the uh, 
uh, vertebral bodies and the disc spaces in some cases. You can see that the uh, vertebral body is underdeveloped or the uh, vertebral bodies may be fused together either partly or completely. And this is very important, particularly in patients with very complicated curves that need surgical correction. This is another view of the CT scan from behind. Here we see the individual lamina. This is the back part of the spine. Sometimes these lamina can be missing, which is uh, uh, a defect that the surgeon needs to be know about, or the lamina can be fused together. We can see the ribs here also. So this can give us a 3D model of the spine. And this 3D model, again, is very helpful uh, for de um, determining what the deformity is in the front view and the side view, and what the potentially the best surgical approach is. And this is another view of the CT scan, and this is actually a CT scan giving us this view through the chest. And this gives us an important um, view of what we're trying to prevent with our treatment of early onset scoliosis. This is the, the spine through here. This is the rib cage. And this is the heart right through here. And you can see in this child that's developed a very severe scoliosis that the spine is almost touching the rib cage here. And that the space available for the lung, which is the black area here on this one side, compared to the space available for the lung on the other side, is extremely restricted. The space available for the lung has a very negative effect on the lung function. Uh, it makes it uh, harder for the child to breathe. It restricts the space available for the lung to develop. Uh, there's a greater work in uh, the child's breathing. It makes it harder for the heart to pump. This can ultimately cause a negative effect on uh, heart function. Ultimately, severe deformities uh, like this can affect the child's breathing and also the child's uh, appetite too, so it can affect the nutrition and ultimately cause uh, poor nutrition to develop in the child over time. Well, this is something that definitely is a concern because many children with early onset scoliosis will require several x-rays per year. So in order to uh, minimize the x-ray exposure, the uh, x-ray techs will try to shield the breast tissue ovaries to make sure that there's no exposure to radiosensitive issues. But it is important to get these films because without the x-rays, we can't tell what's happening with the curvature. And this is uh, very important information that we need to have. Uh, at some centers, there's a technology called an EOS. Uh, the EOS uses a different technology called a slot scanner, where there's a beam that can actually go from uh, the bottom to the top of the child to check the whole alignment if necessary. X-ray exposure is perhaps one-tenth of the normal X-ray dose, so the X-ray exposure is minimized.